Welcome to Public Health On Call, a podcast from the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health, where we bring evidence, experience, and perspective to make sense of today's leading health challenges. If you have questions or ideas for us, please send an email to publichealthquestion at jhu.edu. That's publichealthquestion at jhu.edu for future podcast episodes. This is Lindsay Smith-Rogers. Today, the topic is migration and how the movement of humans affects their health. Stephanie Desmond talks to Johns Hopkins' Catherine Etman, who edited a book on the topic published by the University of Chicago Press about the opportunities and challenges of all this moving around, the health issues that migrants face, and what happens to the physical and mental health of those displaced by war. Let's listen. Catherine Etman, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. So today, our topic is migration and health, which I think we could probably talk about for days and days. You have edited a book about this. You've done a lot of writing about this. And I wanted to talk to you about, basically, let's start off easy, which is what does migration and health mean? Migration is an important demographic trend in this century. More than 280 million people live in a different country than the one in which they were born. If you were to add up all of the international migrants in the world right now, they would be the fifth largest country in the world. So this is a large group, and this group of individuals has had diverse experiences that require unique health considerations. So really, you're looking at how the way we move around affects our health. I go straight to thinking about immigrants and also like folks who are displaced by war. So I'm curious if you could talk about, I know those are two big topics, but when we're talking about health, what are we thinking about in terms of those who are uh, migrating from country to country? Well, when we talk about migration, this is the broadest definition possible. These are people who have moved from one place to another. That can be within countries or across country borders. For international migrants, they change the country that they've lived in. And we have different experiences based on legal considerations. For example, people who are refugees or asylum seekers. The experience that different migrants have can affect their health across the life course. So what matters is the conditions upon their migration, the phases of migration, and what assets they have access to in their host country and the country where they are moving. Talk about that a little more. I'm curious, you know, what you mean about the assets they have. And because a lot of us, I think of poor migrants that come under less than ideal circumstances and need a lot of health care. And I guess that's not necessarily the norm. People are the product of their environments, and health is the product of the multiple levels that we live in. So individual health is the product of the family context, neighborhood context, state context, and national context. For people who migrate, their health is the product not only of the country that they were born in, but also all of the countries that they have transited through and the countries that they ultimately reside in. So when we think about migrants and people who migrate, there's no one experience. All migrants have a unique story. And health is ultimately the product of the interactions that they have, the exposures to resources that can improve health or reduce health. For example, migrants may be exposed to violence in the course of their migrant status, or that may be why they are migrating. Many migrants are now the victim of natural disasters or war, as you mentioned. And displacement from the home can be very bad and detrimental for physical and mental health that can have effects throughout the life course. Now, that being said, migration and health can also produce some paradoxical findings. There's something called the healthy migrant paradox, where migrants actually have better health outcomes than their counterparts in their host countries. So there are two leading hypotheses. One is selection bias, that only people who are healthy enough to make the move can migrate. In that case, 
people who are sicker are not able to move. The second hypothesis has to do with what we would call ethnic enclave effect or access to social support. So for migrants who move across countries, they may find migrant communities in their host countries where they, number one, are better able to access resources. That might be the reason why they migrated to begin with, is to have access to economic opportunities or to be free from religious persecution or otherwise. So that may have health benefits, but also migrants may have access to things like social support or religious communities or families and groups that can confer health and improved mental health through the protection of social support. Tell me a little bit about women. I know that you've been studying women specifically for some new work you're doing. What does the migration experience look like? And I know it's not one size fits all, but what are some of the concerns that come to you? Absolutely. And this is a forthcoming chapter in a book called Women in Health, Third Edition, where we look specifically at the role of migration in shaping women's health across the life course. So I mentioned earlier that context shapes health. So the experiences that we have, whether it's exposure to violence or access to health care, these can all shape health. And The exposures that we have at different points in our lives can influence health across the life course. So what do I mean by that? For women in particular, first of all, 134 million women on this planet are migrants. They have moved internationally from their country of birth. Now, as you mentioned, there's no one size fits all. There's no experience that all women have. However, women are more likely to be victim to human trafficking. They're more likely to be victim to violence in the course of migration. And women also face challenging circumstances that may lead to worse health outcomes. And if they experience these earlier in the life course, they may have different effects. For example, Young children who migrate are more likely to have low vitamin D. They have vitamin D deficiencies. They're also more likely to have stunting, and they may be more likely to have higher rates of obesity in later adolescence because of the lack of access to resources like food or access to reproductive health, which can lead to higher rates of pregnancy or early marriage in migrant girls relative to non-migrant girls. This lack of access, for example, to health care or appropriate reproductive resources can then change their lives. What our chapter has found is that there is a copious amount of literature on women's health as it pertains to maternal, the maternal experience, so pregnancy and pregnancy-related outcomes. And the literature shows consistently that women who are migrants tend to have worse outcomes. And now that may be because of a lack of access to care. So they may be less likely to have access to a health system, to both reproductive, contraceptive services, but then also preventive care and services during the course of pregnancy and during childbirth. And ways that health systems can better support women who migrate would be having ways to address language barriers, cultural barriers, or gaps in care due to things like underinsurance. So we're seeing a lot of war going on in the world right now. I'm thinking of Ukraine specifically, and that's been going on for a a while now, and there's a lot of displacement. Many have moved to other countries. Many are not at their homes any longer. So I'm curious about what the health impact is there. War is detrimental to health. It is detrimental to physical health. It is detrimental to mental health for both the people who experience it directly and the many lives that are affected by the impacts of war. We know that war leads to higher rates of mental illness, post-traumatic stress, anxiety, depression, and these effects can stay across the life course. And of course, exposure to war leads to violence, can lead to disability and death. So certainly war creates displacement. And for the populations that are able to migrate and to move, they will have unique health considerations given their exposure to violence and given the long lasting effects of having disrupted lived experiences. 
Is that something that gets better if they are able to return, or is it really just something that truly impacts them going forward? It goes back to how this conversation started, that our health is the product of our environments, and war can fundamentally change an environment. We often talk about the phases of migration. There's pre-migration, the movement phase, then arrival and assimilation. And then for some migrants, but not all, there's the return. But for many people who migrate, there is no return. Sometimes the place where they've left, particularly in the context of war, will never be the same. And oftentimes people who migrate do so for a reason. It's really hard to migrate. It's really hard to move and to leave the resources that you have, the friendships, the bonds, the world as you know it. So the reason that people most migrate is because they are seeking something different and many do not have the opportunity to return. So the health impacts of war do stay with people throughout the life course. So migration is a fact, right? And in some cases, it's a positive, and in some cases, it, it can be a negative. For those who it's a positive for, what kind of health outcomes do they see? Absolutely. Migration can lead to improved economic mobility. They can lead to economic mobility, not only of the migrant, but for the migrant's families. So remittances are a large portion of the world economy. That's when people are able to make money and send it back to their home country. So benefits of migration include the freedom to pursue economic or educational opportunities or to pursue a life without persecution, be it political persecution or religious persecution or a life without violence. For people who benefit from migration, they may see improved economic outcomes, improved health outcomes, extended life, particularly if their life was at stake. And then, of course, as you mentioned, there are downsides. What we see with the healthy migrant paradox is that migrants are healthier than their host populations, but then the longer they stay in their new home country, the more those differences go away and the more those populations take on the habits and behaviors of the host country and then have the same, one would say, negative health outcomes, be it obesity or early mortality. So my last question, I guess I'm asking you to look into your crystal ball and talk a little bit about what you see as the future of migration and health. Will things get better? Will things get worse? Are we going to keep moving around at the pace we've been moving? I think migration is a fact of human existence. People will continue to migrate. The world is increasingly mobile and global, which I think is ultimately a good thing. And our health systems can adapt to be ever better equipped to address the needs of all populations, including populations who migrate. When people have access to the resources that promote health, entire populations are healthier, be it access to health care, access to education, transportation, housing, jobs, livable wage. And ultimately, those are the factors that will improve health for both migrants and non-migrant populations. The factors that improve migrant health are the factors that improve all populations' health. And so if as a country and as a world, we can focus on those fundamental factors, then that will lead to a healthier world. Migrants improve local economies. Migrants are a part of functioning countries, and so they can improve the access that host populations have to resources. So particularly as we look at demographic trends, like, for example, declining birth rates in middle and high income countries, migration will be a necessary fact of life and will help ensure that those populations have the people and the resources needed to function. So migration will continue to happen, but also host populations benefit from migration. Catherine Etman, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Public Health On Call is a podcast from the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health, produced by Joshua Sharfstein, Lindsay Smith-Rogers, and Stephanie Desmond. Audio production by J.B. Arbogast, Holly Cardinal, Philip Porter, Spencer Greer, and Matthew Martin, with support from Chip Hickey. Distribution by Nick Moran. Production support from Catherine Ricardo. 
Social media run by Grace Fernandez and Shian Briscoe. If you have questions or ideas for us, please send an email to publichealthquestion at jhu.edu. That's publichealthquestion at jhu.edu for future podcast episodes. Thank you for listening.